look upon us, O Lord, create and rule of all things, and that we may feel the waiting of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing these questions to you so that if I am delayed, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of. God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of the truth. Grace indeed, we confess, is the mystery of our religion. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, preached out the nations, believed on in the world, taken up the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your words, Lord, are spirit and truth. You have the words of the of life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus said, What then can I compare this man of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling one another. We pipe to you and you do not dance. We will and you do not cry. For John the Baptist came eating, came eating no bread or drinking no wine. And you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking. And you say, Behold a glutton and a drunkard. A friend of text collectors and sinners. Yet the wisdom is justified by all her children. The gospel of the Lord. When you look at life uh, and the essence of letters, the importance of words, words define who we are. And our vocabulary, for each and every one of us has a vocabulary that they put across in, in the form of words. Now, words have an impact. They can either create or destroy. In the back of the mind of St. Paul, when he writes his letter to Timon, he understands that this is the pastor of the church, and he is a young pastor. He needs encouragement. And that is key in life. 
we need to encourage one another, not to pull down one another, but to encourage one another to see the good that is in the other. And whenever we think of maybe the intention of the other, let us always view others in a good light so that we can encourage them for the better. And this is why Paul says to Timothy, remember, Christ became manifest in the flesh. And he's talking about the incarnation of Christ. Whenever we talk about the incarnation of Christ, we talk about the assumption of humanity. Humanity is assumed in Christ. It is in Christ, and it is not absorbed. It is not destroyed in Christ. And this is the essence of his message. To say, the truth is in Christ. And some might go on to argue that Christ of God is the absolute truth because everything was created out of love. And if everything was created out of love, it has to manifest that love that was given by God at creation. This is why I would like to submit that we were all created good, but we become bad because of choice. The problem in life becomes choice. The choices we make define who we are. Even our thoughts and words, the thoughts that are in our conscious mind and the thoughts that are in the subconscious mind define who we are. And at this institution, we are saying we are lovers of the truth. We are lovers of wisdom. In a way, we become philosophers. We don't need to love wisdom. Embrace it and let her just groom us up so that we can be people of good stature in life. Today we pray for our prefects, and in a way, in a small way, they are taught to be stewards, they are taught to be accountable, and they are taught in a way to be good to others. But above all, we are part of that team. We should say to ourselves, we want to be like this, so that our impact not only lies within the walls of this institution, but it has just to go beyond the walls of this institution. Paul is saying to Timothy, remember the dignity that is involved in the house of God. The mandate of every Christian out of the world supposes that we make Christ present to those around us. But charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. So those who are our parents, those who are our guardians, they have to see that light of growth in us. That stewardship, that transparency, that accountability, it has to begin at home, then later on manifested in certain institutions, and then later on um, in life. Always love the truth, because the truth will set you free. Never be allergic to the truth. The world that we live in is now a transactional world, a transactional society. And we see people of stage are being allergic to the truth. We are not supposed to be like that. Let us fall in love with the truth and remain loyal to the truth. And I think, in a way, I'd like to twist somehow the message we are getting from the gospel. Jesus looking at the generation and saying to them, what can I compare this generation to? We tried to did not dance, well, did not cry. When I look at you, there is that aspect of innocence. Always maintain your childhood innocence. Even later on in life, when things go, always return to your innocent self, to be that small self, that innocent one. That will shape you to be a better person in life. Life. First and foremost, the prefix it to all of us. Life is not what it seems. We have visions, we have goals, but sometimes we will not attain the goals that we have set for ourselves. We will become frustrated, but at the end of the at the end of the day, when things don't make sense, there has to be someone who guides us. There has to be a mentor. Make sure you choose the right person to be your mentor in life, and then life will be. Uh, in a way, beautiful. We are stewards of God's creation. We are stewards of our environment. And out of love, we need to treat one another in a, in a brotherly and a sisterly love. And lastly, Paul was concerned uh, 
that at least to Timothy, the part that is being chosen, when things would get rough, maybe, maybe he wouldn't be on the mission at all. And this is why he's saying, remember that the background of his background of his letter, remember, I am here for you. Whenever you need advice, I'm here. Whenever you need support, I'm here. Let us be there for one another. That's difficult. Human beings are social beings. Without the other, we cannot thrive. Without the other, we cannot grow. And again, life is about growth. We need to grow spiritually, intellectually, and as human beings. Growth centered around the truth is meaningful and worthwhile. We pray in this Mass for our prefects, those who will be given roles of responsibility. May we support them. Support sometimes does not mean you give somebody something. But who Benedict the 16th in his, in his letter, Deus Caritas Past, said, We all have something to give. We all have something to give. It might be our time, it might be a listening ear, but everybody has something to give for the sustenance of a community. As we support one another, as we journey with one another, let us always support one another. But above all, appreciate the good that is in the other. When others stray, may we be there with the gentle guides that later on in life, later on in life, when we meet, definitely we appreciate the other because of the role they played in being aligned to the truth, but above all, supporting us in difficult situations. Yeah, we thank and praise you for the gift of this new day. We thank you for these new prefects of our school that you have granted us. I pray that Lord you may grant them the gift of the Holy Spirit, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, and make them ladies of integrity who listen, who have big hearts, and who have love for the people they, they take care of. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you have made us, a day which will be remembered among us as we celebrate the best of the people of 2021. Guide them in their respect. And above all, give them wisdom in whatever work they do. Lord, bless us. Lord, bless us. We pray for the parents, teachers, and guardians as they nurture these girls to be good leaders of tomorrow. Lord, bless us. Lord, bless us. Dear God, we thank you for everyone who is present here today. Lord God, please bless the girls that we teach each and every day. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, <laughs> 
In a similar way, when Sabo ascended, he took the challenge. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for it for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to build us worthy to be the present and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spreads throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, because Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Father's mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, which is past, with the blessed Apostle, and all the saints who please you throughout the age, we may merit the prayers within our life, and we pray that glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and is yours forever and ever. With a serious command and combined divine teaching, we dare to say, Our oh, Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious, we grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the present hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I give you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God, the only who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
I would like to thank Father Andrew for celebrating this special mass for us. Where a number of our girls are given positions of responsibility. And now we need to acknowledge Mr. and Mrs. Garande. If you can please stand up so that. Parents of our former head girl, Father Garanda, who is in Home One now, Mr. and Mrs. Garanda, will all come to Dominican Convent Primary School. Thank you. Mm 
Mr. and Mrs. Garando work at uh, Atman House School. They are teachers. And they have experience with this school as their daughter was here from ECD up to grade seven, and she's still with us. So for that, we thank God, and we have invited them to be with us and share a little bit with us their experience raising a daughter at this school who actually, at some point in her life, became the head of this school. And among the guests of honor, we have Mr. and Mrs. Charuma. Please stand up so that you also can see him. And Mrs. Chahuma, you will have a story to tell to other parents. You know, because of the uh, COVID uh, restrictions, we were not then able to call every grade seven parent to be present. So the onus is on you that after this uh, celebration of mass, you will have something to tell to the parents so that we can continue praying for the girls. We also have Mr. and Mrs. Mukarakiwa. Please stand up so that the girls can see you. Thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. Mukarakiwa. You also have a, a, a story to tell later on. And I appreciate and acknowledge your presence among us on behalf of the parents. Otherwise, we wouldn't have invited all the parents, the current situation does not allow us to do that. At this point in time, I would like to ask Mr. Garandi just to come forward to give us a, a few words as a father of our, our former head girl, Father Garandi. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Sister. I'm going to say a few words. And the words I'm going to share with you are in story form. So I hope you are all attentive and can listen. It's not one story, actually, it's several short stories. The first one, my mother told me much later about something she said happened when I was very young. She says, other mothers in the street where we live used to send their children to go and play with us because the young boy Arthur was quiet, Arthur was well behaved, Arthur did not use rude language, Arthur was not violent towards other children. This was known in the street when Arthur was that young, that tall. And so the other mothers wanted their children to learn that kind of behavior from Arthur. And they said, go and play with us. That's story number one. From that story, as a grown man now, I can see that already at that young age, Arthur was already a leader. Not because of any position, but simply because of how he had been raised by his parents so far and how he lived. Other people wanted that. And they said, go and play with us. So leadership can be in anyone. 
That's story number one. Story number two, I'm going to cover seven years of primary school. In primary school, I don't remember much. I don't even remember anything that I did that could be called leadership, except just one thing. We used to have rotating group leaders. So for a few weeks, it was me. For a few more weeks, it was this one, that one, that one. It rotated. What was the job of a group leader? Again, not much, except if you are given a task and the teacher says, bring your books to the front, the group leader is the one who collected the books and took them to the front. So leadership at that point had no power, no authority, nothing. It was a service. Because you were the group leader, you did all the work. That's my second story. Apparently, at my school, there were prefects, there was the head boy and the head I don't even, well, I now remember them, but I was none of those. Then I moved to form one, that's story number three. When I came to secondary school, there were different things happening in the school, it was a big school where I felt it was. But leadership for me at that time meant things like we had choir practice. I was a Catholic. I knew most of the Catholic songs. <clears throat> and they would say, which song shall we sing for offertory? And the song that would be chosen is, for example. And the one who was the leader is the one who started the song. So for me, at that time, leadership meant, as you are doing anything, you do it yourself. And Others follow. Again, that's another model of leadership. You are offering a service because of the special gift you have. I used to have this gift of singing, one. But that's one of the things you can use your gift for the service of your community. This is form one, form two, form three. Fast forward, form six. The same school, they decided they were going to make me the head boy of that school. Maybe they, they saw something, I don't know. But one of my biggest concerns immediately was how many head boys can a school have? One. What will happen to my friends whom I have been with from form one to form six? They will start to say, that is the head boy. He has authority. He has power. They will keep a distance from me. I did not want that. So I consciously, on purpose, I tried to remain available to my friends. So they would come and talk to me, just like one of them. And I would go and talk to them. But because they were my friends, if I wanted anything done, I began to do it myself, and they would join in. That, is, that was my idea of leadership at that point. So as I led my friends, I led them by, by my example, by doing what needed to be done. My message. A school like this cannot make Everyone, a leader, as in one with a position. All of us, however, are leaders. How you behave, how you talk to each other, how you respond to requests from your classmates, from your teacher, all those things will show leadership. But only a few get to be asked to wear a badge to be asked to look after this class, to be asked to go to the office to pick something up, and so on. If you are one of those few, congratulations, but please, 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 remain humble. Remain accessible, available 
reachable to your friend. On the other side, if you are not one of those few, remember my story. In primary school, I did not lead at, at, at any significant level. But later on, I got my chance. I also got to lead at a fairly significant level. This is life. We get opportunities at different moments. So yes, you may be disappointed that you are not chosen today. Nothing to cry about. But you can still make your year an interesting one by remaining friendly to those who have been chosen, by supporting them in their work. At my school, what we tell the seniors is, all of you seniors, as seniors you are, the school leaders, all the juniors look up to you for an example, for, for modeling, for everything. So together, you are all leaders. Help the younger ones as you get things happening in the school. And that is my last point. <clears throat> At the end of the day, why do we put leaders in place? Is it so that that one can shine and that one can shine and that one can feel small? No. Leadership is about service. It's about getting things done. We would like the young ones to walk in single file to the next place. We need someone to lead them, get a leader. There is a leader over there. We need it picked up. Who's going to pick it up? Well, get a leader to show people what needs to be done. Participate, but get the job done. That's what you are here for. Never lose sight of that. As I leave, I want to say all the best to all of you for a happy leadership year. Thank you. Oh, yeah. 
We pray. Remember our most precious Virgin Mary, that never was known in any age. But anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or such intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, therefore, we fly to you, our Virgin, the Virgin, our Mother, till we come before you stand simple and sorrowful. We know our Mother's word in kind despise our petition, but graciously hear and grant them. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, I will pray. And do the Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell, sit in all wicked spirits, one of the world, for the real souls. The God be with you. The Almighty God bless you, Father.
It is an honor to have been asked to offer a vote of thanks on this momentous occasion. On behalf of my colleagues and the entire staff that worked tirelessly to make this event a success, I would like to extend my gratitude to our guests of honor, Mr. and Mrs. Garande. Addressing this occasion, our head mistress, Sita Titi Dasha, Father Musarua, Okondashi, our vice head mistress, Mrs. Mugomazana. in their new leadership roles. To the outgoing prefects, not here unfortunately, we thank them for their service and may God continue to bless them wherever they are. Lastly, a hearty appreciation to each and every one of you who have made this event possible. Thank you to the music department in particular. Thank you all. And may you have a better day. Doctor, I would like to call upon our newly appointed head girl and deputy to come over and present our token of appreciation. You are part of our family. So on Friday with Father, and we received a very wonderful message, which he carried on. I wish you were there on God's blessing. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharistic celebration has come to an end. Let us go in peace, the love and set the Lord. Thanks be to God.